Hi, everyone. Welcome back to The Danny Show. Today, I have a very special guest. His name is The Magic Matt. So he's a captivating magician and content creator, blending the mesmerizing world of magic with the dynamic realm of social media. Matt weaves spells both on and off the screen with sleight of hand and an uncanny ability to captivate audiences. Matt transcends the boundaries of traditional magic, infusing it with modern flair and digital charisma. Prepare to be spellbound as Matt invites you into a realm where illusion meets innovation, where every trick is a spectacle and every post is a portal to wonder. Welcome to the magical journey of the magic Matt, where the line between reality and illusion blurs, leaving audiences in shock and bewilderment. And now the magician himself joins me live, the magic Matt. How are you doing, Matt? I'm good, man. How are you? Happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for so much for coming on the show. I'm a huge fan of yours. For sure. I appreciate it. I'd love to help out and hopefully inspire some people. <laughs> awesome, man. Awesome. So first question, what inspired you to do magic and kind of merge it with social media? Yeah, so I feel like it's a pretty common creator story. Um, I started performing magic in around 2018, 19. And that was at the time that my grandfather passed away. So oh, sorry to hear that. Kind of yeah, thank you. Um, one thing that he always did that I remember was he did this one specific card trick. And as a kid, mm -hmm. I was always mesmerized by it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, after he passed away, it was sort of a tough time for me. So really? I kind of went into magic, you know, everyone was talking, Oh, I remember that one trick he did, right? So it's kind of nice memory for me. So I learned a card trick myself. And I kind of showed my family and whatever. And like, wow, like, that's really good. Like, you're a magician now. And I'm like, I guess I am. So I started performing like, local talent shows and actually i performed at my great grandmother's 100th birthday party um, so that was kind of a big <laughs> thing uh but then when lockdown hit, obviously i couldn't perform anymore so i started posting online and after about four months of no success online my magic tiktoks finally had one blow up and it was just kind of upward from there awesome so you got the inspiration from your late grandfather i r.i.p of course but that's Dang, pretty yeah. that's pretty amazing um that that was your inspiration um, so I kind of got to know you through before our interview, I, I told you, like, I saw you always on my for you page on Instagram and on, on TikTok back in high school, and you do so many cool tricks. I want to know what that whole creative process is like, how do you come up with that whole notion of like, how do I do a better trick than the, than the next one or the last one, you know? <laughs> yeah, for sure. I know in the whole world of social media, it's always about like, you know, outdoing what you did last, mm -hmm. um, especially in the world of magic. And yeah, I started out with like card tricks and whatnot, but it was always trying something new that sort of led me to um, connect with a bigger audience. For example, like I kind of started combining magic with like visual arts and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, like my uncle is actually a professional comic book artist. Right. And he did work for like DC Comics, like the original Batman, Gotham Adventures, like he was the illustrator, right? So Ooh. I've always had kind of like that visual arts running in the family. So Ooh. I started combining, you know, like interesting drawings or like tape portraits where if you shine a light, it creates like a visual effect. Um, so kind of blurring that line between like magic and art, uh, I think is what sort of propelled my career. As far as coming up with new ideas, it was always just kind of like, testing a few ideas that would come to me you know I have a few ideas write them down post the few ideas and whichever one did best sort of try and build a series off there oh that's that's amazing I think every creator kind of has like a creative sort of process with their mm -hmm. with their content uh things come differently in this industry so I wanted to know also like what type of like challenges have you faced as a magician yeah for sure uh I know as a magician specifically uh more on like the live performing side it's always a challenge of like keeping your tricks fresh but also like performing the ones you know really well right. um, especially online too like I'd hate to learn a trick or create something just for the sake of putting a video out so one of the challenges is like not rushing something but also not being a perfectionist so it's kind of finding that middle ground and something that's kind of helped me is like when I post a video or learn a trick or perform a trick, like as long as it's 70% as good as mm -hmm. it could be, I think that's a solid ground. Cause like mm -hmm. if you always aim for a hundred, you're going to end up trying to be a perfectionist and never get anything done. Right. So kind of perfection is the enemy of progress in that regard. Yeah, I totally agree. I feel like even with my show, like I try to give it a hundred percent of my best effort but even if it's like 70 percent, like i'm satisfied you know what i mean i think like the majority of the ground is covered 
but like mm-hmm. you said like you, you can't be a perfectionist like you 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 could try but it's never going to work and there's always room for improvement of course so like mm-hmm. after you've you've done those tricks and whatnot like you do you feel like there's like an end to to doing tricks or do you feel like it's like endless amount of tricks like i feel like some magicians like stop at a certain amount of tricks but some of them yeah. go towards new ones but how does that work for you like do you just go with the flow do you stop at a certain point and kind of just rebound next year how does it work yeah so i feel like i'm always trying to come up with new tricks and ideas um you know like in the world of social media like we were mentioning there's always kind of that pressure to sort of outdo your last video or right you know the world of magic like outdo your last performance kind of thing mm-hmm. um as far as an end <laughs> there's not one that i can see like you said there's always room for improvement right so it's kind of like one thing i learned early on was that like quantity leads to quality so right the more you do of something it's like you know once i do this then i'm done with this you know like once i finish this video that's the end of the idea but then once right. you post that video it's like oh i could have done this or maybe if i do a spin off like this so I feel like every time I perform a trick, it's always like an idea comes to me like, now what if there's this? So it's sort of like a snowball effect once you get the creative juice flowing. Exactly. Like the ball never just stops rolling, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you talked about the inspiration being your grandfather, um, mm-hmm. your late grandfather, RIP. Um, but how are there any other magicians that kind of inspired you like Harry Houdini or anyone that, that's been on, you know, America's Got Talent or anyone in the digital space? Yeah, for sure. So this is actually, I guess, sort of interesting add on. Um, So my grandmother at the time sent me a video of Shin Lim from America's right. Got Talent. Right. Yeah. And that was kind of like the first magician I sort of saw uh, on America's Got Talent where I was really like, wow, <laughs> like this guy yeah. might have magical powers kind of thing, right? It feels like, like he does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like I went to class the next day. I was showing my buddy, like you see this act, like this is ridiculous. Like none of these people know anything about magic, right? I was just so like shocked by his routine. Right. Um. So anyway, yeah, Shin Lim was definitely my big inspiration. I remember at the time I was in grade 10 or 11, I sort of scraped together all my Christmas money to buy one of his like, you know, DVD downloads, like Mm -hmm. for his beginner tricks. And that was kind of like the first magic trick I bought. And I learned a lot from him. And yeah, he's always just been kind of like the OG magician I've looked up to. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, Shin Lim is an amazing act. Like I watch a lot of America's Got Talent. Um, I'm mostly Mm -hmm. watching it for the singing and then seeing the performances. But whatever act shows up, might as well watch it uh, as well. Uh, I see a lot yeah. of magicians. I remember Matt Franco being a really good magician. If you if yeah. you remember like how he pulled like a picture of Heidi Klum and like the Joker and kind of like <laughs> played around. Yeah. That was really cool. So yeah, like that's really cool. But um, kind of coming back to the whole conversation with social media and mm-hmm. magic acts, how do you see it as a really good opportunity as a creator to just get out there like? um when did you feel like it was the right time for you to put out content yeah for sure so um kind of like I feel like with me and a lot of my friends it was sort of like we performed live um and then when lockdowns hit right we couldn't perform at venues you know the maximum gathering of people was like three right what kind of show is that going to be um so we we kind of were forced to sort of start posting online uh and it's interesting because I had one friend who would get like millions of views on social media, but it wouldn't help him book any shows. Um, So I feel like there's kind of a divide sort of between like social media and the real world. And that's something I'm working on too, like bridging that gap, but it definitely does help. You know, you post illusion based videos and things like that. And then you pitch yourself as like, you know, a social media creator or something like Mm -hmm. that. Like, you know, it's not like, here's a trick I did in my video. Like I'm going to perform the same trick at your event it's more like, you know, I create illusions and art and it's like sort of a mysterious thing. Like, oh, like we want to see more kind of thing. Not like a, here's a video I posted. I can do this for you. It's sort of like a a foot in the door sort of thing with my social media to get into the the live performing. I see. So it's kind of like a platform for you to like kind of do the trial runs before the actual performance. Is, is that what I can call it? Yeah, or even just test more creative ideas, oh, right? Like if right. I'm going to an event, <laughs> I don't really want to be experimenting with things. 
And it's interesting too, because on social media, you can tell more stories and things like that, right? right. Because, you know, your audience tends to know you. Um, so yeah, social media, it's definitely a good place. Like some people use it just for the purpose of, you know, booking shows and things like that. I kind of use it as like a creative outlet and sort of just like an introduction to who I am and like a place to leave, you know, event planners or people looking for magicians wanting more. I see. So um, this kind of, this is another question I was thinking of when, when we were talking about that actually recently. Um, do you feel like the digital space is is very different in the sense that you perform differently than in person on stage? Yeah, so that's actually an interesting question. Um, and I feel like I do for sure, because, uh -huh. you know, in a magic trick video, I feel like I learned this early on. And a lot of my other magician friends uh, have sort of commented on this as well, like who do videos about magic and whatnot. You, know, you can do a video of a card trick and like, it's fine, you know, I'm sure you'll get like 10 comments, people saying it's edited and it might end there. So it's not, you know, it's not as impactful as it would be in person. Like you can say, okay, pick any card. Here's your card. And it's like, okay, like it's not as impactful if you're in person, and, you know, the person's holding it and everyone's getting into yeah, it. Exactly. Um, so yeah, I, even some of my magician friends and I, we sort of like save the best tricks for the in-person because that's where it's the most impactful, right? So on my social media page, I've kind of experimented with a bunch of different things like illusions art magic obviously you know skits storytelling mm -hmm. sort of just like me you know just experimenting with with who I am where it's like when I'm performing it's like I want the strongest illusions and like the best magic that I can put out where it's like social media it's more of like a creative outlet kind of thing I, I really do understand what you mean like as creators I think with social media we kind of reveal who we are as a person but I think mm -hmm. when we get into like a stage they only see us as our title like I'm the journalist you're the magician right yeah that's what they only see but once you get that one-on-one -on -one connection and build that rapport between you and your audience through a, a social channel like your TikTok or Instagram I feel like then they'll be like okay I know this guy truly like what he is made out of on the scene. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, for sure. It's definitely uh, more interesting too, because when you do a live event, you're there for, you know, an hour or two, like I've done right. recently for like holidays, right? You know, mm -hmm. walk around corporate magic, some stage magic, whatnot. And it's fun. Like I see the people for a couple hours. It's great to meet them, some good magic and whatnot. But Whereas on my social media channel, like I can try out new things, you know, like people, they see it, they either like it, they don't like, it's more of like a sandbox. I feel like to try new ideas. Mm -hmm. um, but then like, yeah, the in-person it's like you meet the people and it's great to meet them and make connections and things like that. But it's just not as like, you know, you're not posting to them every day. You sort of yeah. see them for an event and that's, you know, that's where it is. That's where it is, right? But I think it will, even if you get into those events, like people will start like following you and then they'll be like, yeah. oh, part of that audience, like on your social channels, which which even builds you as a creator as well. Like, how do you kind of do that audience interaction? Like, I know I talked about this uh, recently in my other podcast with one of my other guests, but um, we were talking about, the the hate culture involved in social media uh, i i probably presume that some of the times as uh, when you release tricks people come into your comments be like you're a bad entertainer you're bad this that da, 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 da. but how do you kind of address those issues that hate culture that that social media has yeah for sure so i know <laughs> when i started out posting online it mm -hmm. took me a good like four months maybe even five months sort of that whole summer of 2020 right. where I would post like a couple videos every day for months and I think like my most viewed video had a thousand views um, right. and it was a very slow ride like I would post a video and like th there'd be three comments it'd be like this trick is fake you know <laughs> this video sucks and like your forehead is too big you know just like ridiculous hate right. crime. And it was just kind of like you know always having that mentality that like one day I'm going to look back at this and be like, this is where I started and here's where I am now. Um, and also just using it to grow, right? Like you can't take the, sure. these things personally. Like it's just a reflection on your, your content rather than you, right? Like if someone says this trick is bad, like, yeah, it's a little harsh, but there's always something you could do better. So it's always kind of mm -hmm. like taking, like reading the criticism, but not exactly taking all of it to heart. 
Yeah, exactly. I think taking it as constructive criticism, even though it is very negative, <laughs> but we do take it as constructive because we grow as creators. Because like I said, we are the creators, right? So they are seeing the content. They can only give so many opinions towards us, but they're not going to create at the end of the day. That's only us going to be creating it. And we just have to take it as criticism and just take it to, 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 to good meaning and to good heart. Don't take it the negative way and don't take it, you know, painfully to the heart. Yeah. Like, you know, if someone says like you post a video, it's like, oh, you're, you know, this classic, like your voice is so annoying. Like I can't stand right. to listen to it. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, it's rough to read, but you know, maybe my cadence could be better. Maybe right. like it does sound too scripted. Right. So as harsh as it may sound, like there's always sort of like, I don't want to say a lesson to be learned, but as harsh as the comments are, there's always something you can improve on. So mm -hmm. it's not, it's sort of looking at like what the message is rather than like how it was said sort of thing. Exactly. Now coming back to the tricks itself, um, now that you've talked about the criticism and you've all, like, you know, we've digested it and now we're, we're, we're talking about the, the great tricks that you do. Uh, what have been sort of your favorite moments in this industry as a, as a magician and content creator? Yeah, for sure. So it's definitely been a lot of fun. Um, obviously, just posting videos that I enjoy. Um, brand deals have been a lot of fun as mm -hmm. well. Right. Um, I've worked with a couple of brand, you know, like back in a couple years ago, I did like a brand deal with Fortnite, which is really cool. Ooh, that's cool. <laughs> Yeah, me, me and the guys are like playing, playing a lot back then. So that was really fun. Um, And again, like kind of the way I was able to like fuse magic and illusions and art sort of like opens me up to these different venues and ventures. Um, So yeah, I mean, what, favorite moments like brand deals. That was cool. I did one with State Farm, which was really cool. Um, As far as like in person, VidCon I went to recently, like in the mm -hmm. summer. Right. That was really awesome just to meet a lot of other creator friends. But I would say the highlight of the creator career. And honestly, the best part is just like the people you meet along the way. Uh, like there was one creator I used to watch early on. His name was Andy Zhang. And he did like a lot of storytelling type content. Mm -hmm. I used to watch him every day. And I was like, oh, this guy's the best right in 2020. And as my page grew, eventually we became mutuals and we were talking. Um, and now, you know, we talk about whatever, right? Like he's a cool guy and like a lot of other friends I've met there and they're just genuinely nice people on the same path as you. So mm -hmm. I think sort of the best part of the creator career is just sort of the people you meet and the friends you create. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, honestly, um, uh, it's, it's pretty great how kind of social media brings people together in, in some shape or form as well. Like, um, I'm bringing in guests that you know, like yourself as well, um, <laughs> that back in high school, I would be like, yeah, I'll probably meet them, you know, one day in my, you know, fantasies, you know, someday <laughs> down the road, maybe if, you know, just all those questions kind of loom your mind. And now I'm talking to like you, Nima, Naz, all these guys. It's a that's yeah. pretty cool. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> um, so honestly, I want to know as well, um, are you are you a student? Like, do you study part-time or do you go to school? Yeah, for sure. So back in high school, mm -hmm. I uh, was in something called the IB program. Right. It was kind of like, I don't know, I guess school on steroids. I can't, <laughs> I guess you could, it was just yeah, like, you know, my high school too. I, I know. Right, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's the group of kids that have one too many assignments every day. Exactly, um, right. But yeah, it was just sort of like, you know just a heavy workload of courses and you sort of take like a couple of university courses in high school, like university level. Right. Um, anyway, sort of like a university prep program. So I did that and coming out of high school, I thought like, okay, like academics sort of my thing, like that's what I really want to do. Um, and I went into engineering. So I actually study okay. engineering at the university of Toronto. Mm -hmm. I'm in my final year now. So a month Congrats. from now, <laughs> I will be an engineer. So that, that'll be a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, so I'm currently in engineering at U of T, computer and electrical engineering. Cool. And that's definitely been tough to balance alongside social yeah. media and live performing. But 
yeah <laughs> yeah that, no that's great man that actually ties into my next one that i wanted to talk to you about the question uh, like how do you find that balance actually between you know your your content and then engineering which is a very tough discipline so i respect you you're gonna get the ring soon so mad respect <laughs> yeah the iron ring that's yeah. that's coming up uh <laughs> but yeah i mean the balance i feel like it's it's not something like as much as some people seem to have it figured out mm -hmm. it's always like you know it's always a struggle kind of finding time. I feel like the main thing that helps is just like, as opposed to relying on motivation, it's more like relying on discipline. Like exactly. if I have an assignment I need to do, you know, like, and I set aside like a specific block of time to do it. Like I need to do it in that time. Right. Like, uh, <laughs> right. Same here. Same here. Uh, all university <laughs> students need to have that discipline because it's not like high school where someone's by your side saying like oh do you need help do you need help on this you know teachers emailing you university yeah wants you to do it by yourself figure it out by yourself you know you have to reach out to them they might not even answer you know so it's coming up with like you know welcome to the real world like where no one cares about you that much you know <laughs> so it's it's tough even as a creator like balancing my show with academics you balancing your yeah. tricks with your academics every creator you know balancing it it's tough trust me <laughs> but uh yeah it's worthwhile as well <laughs> yeah i mean what i will say just on that point um the thing that has helped me is like just kind of keeping new ideas flowing um and staying excited about it for sure but the reality of it is like there are going to be times when school sort of takes up all your time and there are going to be times where creating takes up all your time right uh, you know like during midterm season like i'm not going to post as much as i would you know like i'm not going to exactly. book as many gigs as i would have liked to so it's sort of just like understanding that priorities might not shift but like some things might have to take priority over others and you know it's just part of the process I see. I see. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Sometimes you got to stay focused on one aspect of, of your life mm -hmm. more than the other one, even though you think both are important. One kind of uh, gets more heavier and in, 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 in spirit and you got to pay more close attention to it. But, you know, it comes back in full circle, right? Sometimes like midterm final season, you you're, you're grinding on your work and then you kind of come back to your second grind, which is like your show or, you know, what you do for your content. So I totally agree um yeah second last, second last question matt um so what type of advice do you have for any creators out there who want to get into magic want to do tricks have thought about getting into magic or becoming a magician what, what do you have in mind for them yeah for sure so as far as like becoming a magician um i kind of had like an odd path because i sort of started live performing and then went on social media and then like back to live performing and also doing social media as far as magic goes, it's just sort of, you know, taking off every opportunity you can. Like if there's an opportunity you can take, take it, whether it's like local gigs or things like that. Like I'm still breaking into the live performing space again after COVID, mm -hmm. um, but it's sort of just playing around with tricks, show friends, show family. And then as far as social media, like I have a couple other pages, like I have a storytelling page, a skit page, um, various other things that have, you know, like been successful in the sense that like I'm putting out content that I like to put out and just like in social media as a whole, um, it's sort of, like I said earlier, quantity leads to quality. Like your first hundred videos are not going to be good. Uh, but once you post those hundred videos, the information you will have learned about what works and what doesn't is invaluable. <laughs> right. So exactly. if you want to start, it's really just, you know, picking up your phone or picking up the cards and just starting um, and then, you know, not being focused on the final destination, but understanding that it's going to be a process and just taking it, you know, one step at a time. Yeah, honestly, I wholeheartedly agree with you. I feel like just understanding the process of how to do things uh, really opens up your mind. You see like how you can, you know, become better as a creator. Like I look back sometimes at my old videos and be like, wow, like I really have grown since then. But even if I haven't even, you know, picked up the camera or pressed that record button or started, I wouldn't have been here right now talking to you. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, just take your time with it. You'll grow. Trust me. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Matt, you, you talked about prior to our interview, you want to do a magic trick for everyone? I sure do. Yeah. I okay, think sure. okay. a lot of first, fun. first one on the Danny show, everyone. 
Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's interesting because this is one that I usually do live. Um, but I think it should work over Zoom. So okay, should I get my glasses for this? Like, if I want to see better, or yeah, you might have to read. Um, okay, let me get my glasses. Yeah, for sure. Uh, while you do that. Um, what I'd ask for you to do is just think of a number from one to 20, let's say one to 20. Yeah. Just think of anyone. Can, can, can everyone do this or just me? Is it just me? You can do, a, do the trick on me. No problem. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. But before you say it, just think of one in your head. Okay. One to 20. Yeah. One to 20. Okay. okay. So just Got while it. you're thinking of that, I'm going to show you through here. You can see like the rock, Tom Cruise, Messi, Ed Sheeran, Brad right. Pitt, yeah. Billy Eilish. It's yeah. just a bunch of celebrities, right? Right. So you thought of a number from one to 20, right? Yeah. Can you actually say what was that number? 17. 17. Okay. So we're going to go through actually. And you can see 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And then the next one will be, should be say number 17 at the bottom there. Right. Can you read that name there? Don't say it out loud. Can you read it though? I can read it. Yeah. Okay, uh, cool. Okay. Okay, just make sure you remember that, all right? Okay. We're going to try something. I have a deck of cards here. Okay. Can you think of any, just any playing card in a deck of cards? Like, imagine a deck floating above you, and you pick okay. out one card. One card. Okay, got it. Okay, you got one in mind? You yeah. picked out one card? Yeah. What actually is that one card that you picked out? Uh, so just say it. Uh, three yeah. of clubs. Three of clubs. That's actually really interesting that you'd pick that because check it out in this deck of cards. You see that every card is face up, but there's actually one that's facing the wrong way. Right. You saw the name of a celebrity in that book earlier, right? Yeah. This is going to be, I guess, mirrored because of the, the camera. But if you could read that backwards, what does that actually say? Cristiano Ronaldo. Was that the celebrity from the book? That was the celebrity from the book. And you named any card in the entire deck. <laughs> no way. Exactly cool. <laughs> oh, <That> man. <laughs> oh, no way. Because so, it was actually cool because the celebrity in my book is the favorite, my favorite celebrity. And now the card, oh, man. Like, this is the <laughs> moment of my show. Oh, Meant man, that was be. so cool. <laughs> awesome, man. I'm not going to post this part of the video on my story i want people to like actually see it <laughs> it's so cool man oh that's so cool thank you bro i appreciate it yeah yeah for sure so i mean when i perform at like events and things like that it's always just so fun you know just one-on-one -on -one or a small group just doing something like that and just mm. the reactions and connections you get from that are just yeah just, i still can't fun. believe that happened man because it could have been any celebrity but ronaldo man like that's my guy <laughs> meant to be <laughs> it's meant to be like that's even like that doubled the magic trick in some way <laughs> honestly but Matt, uh thank you so much for coming on the show man i really had an amazing time with you magic Matt, everyone the magic Matt. that is you can follow him on his uh tiktok and instagram Matt, thank you so much thank you so much man i really appreciate it hope to talk soon talk soon man take it easy take care see ya see ya man